Welcome back to another episode of Why Did They? How well do we truly know those around us? Can we ever fully trust the people we encounter in our daily lives? The story of Victoria Nasirova serves as a haunting reminder that danger can lurk behind a familiar face, urging us to exercise caution and remain vigilant. As we delve into the world of this heinous criminal, we invite you to ponder the dark depths of human nature, if you dare. Our story is most recently picked up in the state of New York, where the bustling streets became the backdrop for a chilling tale of betrayal, attempted murder, and a sordid past. In a quiet neighborhood, Olga Zvik resided, unsuspecting of the danger lurking nearby. Little did she know that her uncanny resemblance to a woman named Victoria Nasirova would set in motion a malevolent scheme that would change lives forever. Driven by envy and a desperate desire for material gain, Victoria meticulously devised a plan to eliminate Olga, assuming her identity and reaping the rewards of her life. And armed with a poison cheesecake, she set her wicked plan into motion. Imagine this. On an ordinary day in August 2016, Nazarova arrived at Olga's house under the guise of an innocent visit for an eyelash touch-up appointment. A normal activity for the attractive and high-maintenance Victoria, but today she brought along a little treat in the form of a rich and tantalizing cheesecake. Little did Olga know that the seemingly friendly gesture concealed a deadly trap. Nasirova, in a cunning move, had consumed two slices of the cheesecake herself, removing any thoughts of ill will or suspicion from the sweet treat. She then offered a slice to Olga, initiating the harrowing sequence of events that would unfold because, unbeknownst to Olga, this gesture concealed a sinister intent in the form of a deadly dose of poison cunningly hidden within the delicious treat. Prosecutors revealed a chilling detail that added another layer of intrigue to the case. Victoria Nasirova, hailing from Russia, had employed a poison that was exclusively available in her home country. It was a sinister twist that emphasized the calculated nature of her plan. Within 20 minutes, Olga's health began to rapidly deteriorate. Overwhelmed by illness, she sought solace in her bed, unaware of the treacherous betrayal that had just taken place. As the night wore on, Olga slipped into unconsciousness, her body vulnerable and defenseless. According to the account of Tzvik's neighbor, a woman arrived at the house the following morning, carrying a warm bowl of chicken soup. Hastily making her way up to Olga's room, the woman soon descended the stairs, tidying up the bowl before departing. Concern grew when Tzvik remained elusive throughout the day, prompting the neighbor to venture into her room, hoping to ensure her well-being. However, a shocking discovery awaited Olga's friend, who came to check on her. There she lay, unconscious, surrounded by scattered pills, a scene carefully orchestrated by an unknown woman to mimic a tragic suicide. Though Nasirova had failed in her sinister attempt to end Olga's life, she didn't leave empty-handed. The ruthless perpetrator seized the opportunity to rob Olga of her most valuable possessions, a passport, work permit, jewelry, and a substantial sum of $4,000 in cash. These additional details underscored the depths of Nazirova's depravity and the lengths to which she was willing to go to execute her wicked plan. It emphasized her callous disregard for human life and the insidious manipulation she employed to achieve her goals. At this time, NYPD detective Kevin Rogers received an urgent phone call from the patrol officers on duty, informing him about a woman in a semi-conscious state who had reported a theft from her room. The stolen items included valuable handbags. Intrigued by the peculiar circumstances, Rogers promptly made his way to the scene to investigate further. Upon reaching the location, Detective Rogers engaged in a detailed interview with the woman, Olga Zvik. As Zvik recounted her unsettling experience, she revealed that her last memory was of her client, Victoria Nazarova, visiting her with a tempting slice of cheesecake. Little did she know that consuming this seemingly innocent dessert would make her terribly ill, leading to a complete loss of consciousness. The next thing she remembered was waking up at home after a hospital stay. Roger's curiosity was piqued by this mysterious turn of events. Why would someone specifically target Svik? Determined to uncover the truth, he meticulously collected the cheesecake container, making sure to preserve any remaining pastry crumbs. Recognizing its potential value as evidence, Rogers instructed his team to secure the bag container for further testing. 
bringing them one step closer to unraveling the puzzle surrounding the case. Upon resuming her work, Olga Zvik was approached by another client who shared a startling revelation. This client disclosed that she knew someone who had encountered a strikingly similar experience with a woman named Victoria Nasirova. The person in question was Ruben Borokov, a business owner from Queens, who had connected with Nasirova on a Russian dating site. She had portrayed herself as a passionate cook, which initially seemed appealing to Borokov. The two arranged to meet for a dinner, during which Nasirova served Borokov a piece of fish. However, as soon as he took a bite, he experienced a sudden loss of consciousness. While unconscious, Nazirova allegedly seized the opportunity to steal cash and credit cards, proceeding to embark on a reckless shopping spree. Remarkably, even after two days had passed, Borukov remained disoriented and debilitated. It was at this point that Nazirova, perhaps sensing the escalating danger, accompanied him to his dry cleaning business. Concerned employees promptly urged Borukov's sister to summon an ambulance. Seizing the opportunity, Nasirova fled the scene after pilfering cash from a drawer. Adding to the growing intrigue surrounding Nasirova's case, it was astonishing to discover that none of the investigators working on the New York poisonings had any prior knowledge of her status as a wanted fugitive. Her true character and sinister motives remained veiled in secrecy, deepening the mystery and capturing the attention of both law enforcement and the public. The subsequent investigation into the attempted murder of Olga unraveled a shocking history of criminal activities connected to Victoria Nasirova. It was revealed that she possessed a troubling penchant for assuming other people's identities and perpetrating fraud, leaving a trail of victims in her wake. She was also wanted in Russia on murder charges in connection with the 2014 death of her neighbor at the time, a 54-year-old Ala Alexenko, and she is also suspected of killing the owners of a one-bedroom apartment in Russia that she recently sold. According to the court documents and authorities, Nazirova has a record of committing fraud and has been arrested for shoplifting. In one incident, she allegedly attempted to use her boyfriend's death certificate to claim his inheritance in Moscow. In doing so, she forged numerous degrees and used fake diplomas, Ford said. Nasirova fled to New York after she was accused of killing Ala and stealing her money. Nasirova allegedly seduced the lead detective in her prosecution in that case, leading him to facilitate her escape. She has denied any involvement in Alexenko's death, but it makes you wonder if she has indeed killed before and how many times has she been able to get away with it? To help answer this question, let's travel back in time to 2014 in Russia, where a fur-loving Russian temptress befriended an older woman in their homeland and plotted to get rid of her in order to steal her recent inheritance. The raven-haired suspect had been caught on a traffic camera driving a rental car with Alexinko's limp body in the front seat the same day as the murder. Nazirova was shown these images and kept repeating she was in the car alone when questioned about it. She also failed a lie detector test when brought in for questioning, court documents revealed. Nasirova is suspected of killing Alexinko over the $52,000 she made from selling her late mother's house in Krasnodar. Unemployed and in desperate need of cash, she allegedly hatched the murder plot after learning how Alexinko made the money selling her mom's house. From that day forth, the buxom beauty did whatever she could to make sure her plan succeeded helping Alexinko look for new apartments and even sending messages to her phone from an unknown number in an attempt to frame her live-in boyfriend for the murder she was already plotting. Nasirova allegedly spent months trying to alienate Alexinko and eventually got her to break up with Shabalin. Nasirova talked badly about Alice's friends in the course of several months and manipulated her into distancing from everybody but her, and on October 5th, the alleged killer finally struck. The woman's badly burned remains wouldn't be discovered until over a month later, in a village next to Nasirova's hometown. Her daughter had to identify her using dental records. All that was left basically was a skull and bones, she said. No legs, no left hand, nothing. As investigators across the globe attempted to track down Nasirova, the Russian investigation wound up getting stalled, due to a police officer who was sleeping with her at the time and holding back investigation efforts, Ford said. The local officer admitted having sex with Nasirova the night after he searched a lost apartment, saying, I had sex with her, but only after she murdered Allah, according to court documents. He was suspended from the police department later that year, the documents say. 
During this tryst with the local law enforcement, Nazirova stayed busy because days after Alexinka went missing, her son began receiving creepy messages from someone impersonating his mom. Don't look for me and let me live mine, the messages read. I am happy now. My life is good. I will pray for you. Ford also received messages from the same unknown number saying, Sweetie, don't worry about me. I'll notify you about where I am soon enough. Instead of lying low after fleeing, the Russian chose to flaunt her freedom on Facebook, shamelessly posting pictures of herself in fur coats and the Manhattan skyline. While she could have gone anywhere in the world to avoid being arrested, she wound up choosing Brooklyn, which is exactly where Alexinko's daughter Nadezda Ford was living at the time of her mother's death. The worried daughter said that when she learned Nazirova had slipped into the city, she moved to Queens, fearing Nazirova could come after her. Ford found out that Nazirova was in Brooklyn after the people she was staying with filed a police report against her, claiming she admitted to killing Alexienko during a heavy night of drinking. She told them she killed a person in Russia, Ford said. It seemed like a joke to them at first, but she insisted it was true. They then Googled her and found out she was wanted and notified police, but they weren't able to find her. I was afraid, I'm still afraid, Ford told the Post before the arrest. As it turns out, it was Olga, a local lash artist that should have been afraid, not Ford as proved by the poisoned cheesecake that almost took her life. As the case of the poisoned cake made its way to the courtroom, the atmosphere was tense with anticipation. The trial provided a platform for the victims, past and present and their families to confront the embodiment of evil. Witnesses testified to the manipulative tactics employed by Nazirova, her audacious impersonations, and the devastating consequences she left in her wake. It was easy thing to gain the trust of another person and then take everything from that person, Zvik said in court. It was easy for her to steal. It was easy for her to kill. Now, let's reflect on the courtroom proceedings. How do you imagine the victims and their families felt as they faced their tormentor? Can you fathom the courage it took for them to share their experiences, exposing their vulnerabilities and reliving the trauma inflicted upon them? When the gavel finally fell in February of this year, justice was served. Queen's Supreme Court Justice Kenneth Holder sentenced Victoria Nasirova to 21 years in prison. However, even in the face of her sentencing, Nasirova's audacity and callousness persisted. In a shocking display of disrespect, she retorted with a profanity-laden exclamation, F you. Her outburst further underscored the depth of her depravity and disregard for the consequences of her actions. Now, let's ponder an unsettling thought. Could there be other individuals like Victoria Nasirova, harboring dark intentions and waiting for the opportune moment to strike? How can we protect ourselves and our loved ones from the lurking shadows of deceit? As we conclude this spine-chilling journey into the twisted mind of Victoria Nasirova, we invite you, the audience, to share your thoughts. What aspects of this case perplex you the most? How does the story resonate with your own experiences and fears? Do you think Victoria would continue these types of crimes if she was never caught? And what do you think Victoria's end goal was? Beyond the chilling details and captivating twists, this story calls upon us to prioritize empathy, compassion, and the value of human life. It reminds us to cherish our loved ones, to cherish the trust we place in others, and to be cautious of those who exploit that trust for their own nefarious purposes. May this tale awaken a collective awareness, a reminder that evil can exist within our communities, hiding in plain sight. Let us strive to foster a society where empathy prevails, where we actively look out for one another and where the bonds of trust are cherished and protected. Remember, true crime stories not only entertain, but also serve as cautionary tales. Together, let us cultivate a world where compassion triumphs over cruelty and where vigilance serves as our shield against the shadows that seek to harm us.